sermon at some point today. Uh, I do want to make sure that we understand um, just sort of everything going on with our sister Luce. Uh, she got one opinion. It looks like there's an uh, actual like a break in one of her vertebrae. What was believed to be a crack now looks like an actual fracture, but then uh, is getting a second opinion, and the second opinion doesn't quite see it. So we're praying that the first opinion is mistaken, and that yeah, again, she's going to be you know, totally fine without surgery, but she is uh, involved right now. So okay. please keep uh, loose and uh, Jose's prayers. We're, you know, going to take a communion today, and there's a meal plan set up for the next uh, week and a half or so. Amen? Amen. Uh, okay, the title of the lesson. You guys ready? Yeah, yeah. Well, the test of a disciple. Um, the test of a disciple. It is spring break for uh, the uh, campus students. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, but there's still a test. Amen. And, you know, you're going to go through a lot of tests in your life. Uh, whether you're faithful to God or not, whether you're in the kingdom or in the world, you will be tested. Uh, your metal will be tested. Your faith will be tested. Your love will be tested. When you get married, your marriage gets tested. When you have children, your sanity is tested. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> In the brother's household. Yup. Uh, your relationships are tested. Yo. The sister's household. Oh, yeah. Also, <laughs> no matter what you're doing, to be healthy is a test. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and you know what? This is all to prepare us for the final test, the test of a disciple. Look over at 1 Timothy chapter 4 to see what's at stake. You know, when you're in school and you go through tests, What's at stake? Well, your graduation, amen? Yep. Your, your, your diploma, your education. Yeah. What's at stake for the on the test of a disciple? Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, Go, bro. in verse 16. Come on. It says, watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them. So, or rather, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Yeah. You know, right here it says the test of a disciple. What's at stake? Your salvation. Yeah. And the salvation of those around you, your hearers. The idea is not simply people you meet, but people you care about. The people that know you, people that are watching you and listening to you. Your children, your siblings, your parents, your relatives, your co-workers, and your students, your peers at class. Watch your life and doctrine closely, right? Persevere in them. You know, Femi talked about perseverance. To yeah. make it to the end, you must persevere. Yeah. Uh, there's right. no way that you'll get to heaven on cruise control, amen? Yeah. 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 You cannot coast into heaven. You're going to have to make every effort to make it to heaven. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, there's some confusion out in the religious world. The truth is, there's nothing you can do to deserve your salvation, amen? Yeah. amen. amen. Well, amen. You're amen. saved by grace, amen? amen. amen. Uh, there's no way that you could ever become good enough to be saved. There's no way that a good yeah. moral life is sufficient uh, for you. You need Jesus Christ. Yeah. So does that make sense? You can't like earn your salvation. But Jesus clearly states that you've got to make every effort yeah. to make it. Look over at Luke chapter 13. Come on, Roger. Come on. Luke chapter 13. In Luke 13, in verse Let's go, bro. 22, Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? Why do you think they asked that question? Well, because they've been listening to Jesus' preaching, and they sensed that it was exclusive. They sensed that the road was narrow, so that produced this question like, hey, how many people really are going to be saved? And that's a really challenging question. Right. You know, as you study the Bible and you're faced with the truth of the word, uh, you can start to be concerned about things that don't really have to do with you when you're confronted with a challenging truth. Are you with me? Uh, that you've got to obey and, and repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. You can start to feel like, well, what about the kid in the bush in Africa who never gets to hear the word of God? It's like, well, are you that kid? No, you're right here, amen? So now you've got to repent and respond. Are you with me? And, and, and it's, it's challenging, this idea that people are not going to be saved in the end. Yeah. That we don't like that. We we don't we don't think that that jives with God. Yeah. And we think that, you know, how could God, who's all loving and totally just, how could he condemn a bunch of people to hell? 
And you know, then we come up with nice little sayings. Where it's like, it's not God that sends you to hell, it's your sin. That's not what the Bible says. Mm. Wow. The Bible says God will send you to hell. That's what it says. Wow. Yeah. That's a bit of a scary scripture that you've yeah. got to wrestle with. And you know what? Even like the idea of fearing God, there there should be a fear of God in your heart. Yeah. The Bible says in Proverbs, it's the the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The fear of God in Exodus twenty twenty will keep you from sinning. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't fear God, if there's not reverence and deep reverence, and not just like we can't explain this idea uh, of fear away. Mm -hmm. like, it means reverence. No, it's a little bit like I'm just straight up afraid of what's going to happen if I do yeah. this. Yeah. 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 I don't know about you, but you were you know when you were growing up, were you ever afraid of your dad? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And rightfully so. You ever met my dad? You know, I had some moments. <laughs> right? you know, and good. Why? You, you, you want your children to be afraid, not of you, but of what would happen if they don't listen. Yeah. yeah. Right. Are you with me right there? There's got to be this sense of discipline. So I think in the world it's really challenging. Like, how could God send all these people to hell? Well, of course, He doesn't want anybody to perish. He wants right. everybody to be saved. That's right. Yeah. That's what the Bible Amen. says. This is why God sent Jesus to yep. open up this way for us to get saved. Yeah. Yeah. With me, and it's totally now on us. We get to choose to be saved. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, and, and we can almost sort of haphazardly, uh, flippantly, uh, easily, you know, categorize a billion Muslims mm. and say, well, they're not going to be saved. Mm. You know, you, we live in like what is a. Per, a Protestant kind of world, right, with yeah. sort of uh, evangelical Christianity kind of reigns supreme. We sort of do live in the Bible Belt in Tampa, amen? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so you could casually condemn a billion Catholics. Wow. Like, well, Catholics, you can't be Catholic, right? And, and you say, mm -hmm. it just can't happen. But, you know, and then once you learn doctrine, you realize, whoa, 95% of churches in America don't even believe that you have to be baptized. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, bro. 95%. And as a 5% that do, within that 5%, that's probably gratuitous. That's probably yeah. generous. Yeah. The 5% of the uh, churches in America that believe you have to be baptized uh, don't believe that you have to actually be a disciple. Yeah. They believe in baptism upon request. So if you, if you feel like you want to be baptized, you can be 10 years old and you sort of walk in like, hey, I want to be baptized. They'll maybe do a study about baptism with you, like a baptism class, mm -hmm. and then administer that baptism. And then, you know, you could be committed or not. It's totally up to you. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's these clubs on campus at USF. USF has one of the most saturated religious life uh, sort of organization that these Christian clubs I've ever experienced. I was talking to Austin, the evangelist up in Gainesville yesterday. So you have just that. Joe knows. There's so many religious organizations. Yeah. And then they have these sort of... Uh, what's called like inner varsity is one of them where it's like you could belong to any church you could go to any church and you just go sort of come and worship kind of like a god that you know thinking it's the god of the bible but then there's no commitment required yeah, yeah. So you could belong to this group if you want to or if not hey that's okay too just sort of you know pray and try to be a good person you know this is interesting because when god chose and called abraham Abraham was a polytheist. Abraham yeah. believed and worshipped multiple gods. Yeah. Yeah. And then what was unique about God's call to Abraham, he says, I want you to follow me and me alone. Yeah. I want you to marry me and me alone. Wow. The Bible says that God is jealous. Jealous is his name. Amen. 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 You ever been jealous of somebody? Yeah. 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 You ever felt that? Am I the only one? Yeah. No. 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 I remember when I was dating my wife, and if I felt like she wasn't like giving me enough attention, I'm like, What's up? Like, what's going on? I saw you give that brother a side hug. What's up? I felt like. You get jealous. You get possessive. God is possessive of you. Yeah. So jealousy is one of the few. You can't stand up against jealousy. When somebody's jealous, when a husband is jealous, watch out. You haven't seen that kind of anger. And you know what? It, it, God calls Abraham, and then from the time that he calls Abraham to the time of Jesus, he's walking Abraham and then the Hebrews after that, walking with them through all of their challenges. And one of their greatest challenges is they wanted to go back and worship other gods. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They wanted the convenience of worshiping Baal. They wanted the convenience of worshiping Molech. These other nations around them, they worshiped gods. 
Yeah. yeah. And if Baal wasn't answering, then they'd go over to Molech. Yep. Yeah. And if Molech wasn't home, they'd go over to Asherah, then et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the challenge of following Jehovah is that you could only follow Jehovah. Right. Yeah. 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 You, you were exclusively yeah. right. an Israelite. Are you with me? Yeah. And that's the challenge of being a disciple. Amen. Yeah. 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 You see, the world doesn't understand the exclusivity of discipleship. Yeah. Yeah. The exclusivity of the kingdom. Yeah. It absolutely excludes people that don't want to obey the Bible. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Oh, I'm okay with that. That's not our idea. That's Jesus' idea. Amen. Preach, bro. Yeah. Come on, Jake. So this this challenge of like, man, how could how could so many people be lost? And it's kind of like the idea of man, how could a, a just God condemn all these people to hell? That's that's not the right question. Right. Right. The right question is, how could a just God let any of us into heaven? Amen. The secret to all genius, hide your sources. Amen. Uh, and she's my wife. She's my genius. You know what I mean? So it's like, man, we don't deserve it. We don't even deserve to be here, let alone worship God for eternity. And the disciples following Jesus, they started to get the feeling, I feel like you're saying you can't just sort of cruise into heaven. Let's go back to Luke 13. All right. Come on, Jay. All right, bro. Come on. In verse 24, he said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. Yeah. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Mm -hmm. Then you will say, we ate and drank with you, and you taught in our streets. Yeah. We went to church with you. Yeah. We hung out with you. Wow. We went to a Bible talk with you. We even had a few D times. How could you say you don't know us? But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. Wow. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first and first who will be last. It doesn't matter how long you've been a disciple, you've got to make every effort to get into heaven. Are you with yeah. me? Yeah. Yeah. Now the Greek for make every effort, literally when translated, means to agonize yeah. over making it. I mean, wow. you know, there's a challenge here to say, listen, I, I've got to make sure, I've got to make some sacrifices. I've got to make, I've got to pay the price yeah. Yeah. to get to heaven. Many will try but will not enter it. Therefore, we understand, if you're trying, you're lying. You're lying. As, as Yoda said, there is no try, only do. Right. There's no such thing as trying. There's no cost too great for us to pay because Jesus paid the price. Yeah. We've got to let go of our lives. And we've got to ask ourselves this morning, is my life being disrupted because of the kingdom of God? Or am I disrupting the kingdom of God because of my life? Come on, bro. Oh, oh. Uh, is the kingdom of God disrupting my life? It should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should. Come on, bro. Because before we become disciples, our life is a shambles. Yeah. There you go. But you know what? Even after you become a disciple, you can go back to your yeah, old ways. Yeah. It's the strongest pull on your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And when you introduce commitment to the kingdom of God, you know, we often come to God because we're looking for comfort. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he does. He comforts the disturbed, but then yeah. he disturbs the comfortable. Yeah. Yep, come on. Hold on. And it's so funny that we can find what we're looking for. We become disciples, then sort of we, be, we, we start to settle again. Yeah. 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 And we start yeah. to become comfortable in our lives and comfortable in our walks with God. And the Bible says you've got to make every effort because many who are first will be last, and who are last will be first. Yeah. This is what's at stake. Go back to 1 Timothy chapter 4. All right. All right. Come on. Come on. So, so read it out. You're doing awesome, Jared. You take a quick peek in chapter 3 of 1 Timothy. In verse 1, it says, Here's a trustworthy saying. Actually, 2 Timothy, chapter 3, excuse me. That's not it either. It's all good, bro. Come on, Jared. We're with you, bro. They're both good. 
First Timothy 2. Amen. I urge that, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ, Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men, the testimony given in his proper time. And for this purpose, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I'm telling the truth. I'm not lying. And a teacher of the true faith to the Gentiles. You know, the Bible says that God's will is for all people to be saved. Yeah. And we should pray for all of those in power, all of those with authority, yeah. whether you voted for them or not. doesn't matter. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Jesus is not a Republican. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Jesus is not a Democrat. Yeah. Right. Uh, the kingdom of God is not a democratic republic. Yeah. It's a monarchy that Jesus is king forever. Yeah. 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 There's no elections in God's kingdom. Amen, yeah. guys? Uh, there's no policy that can save you. Amen? Uh, you know, not where you send your kids to school, that matters. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then what is, why should we pray for all of those in, in authority? Because God wants us to live peaceful and quiet lives. Isn't that encouraging? Amen. This idea of a quiet life is the absence of external disturbances. Come on, That's guys. God's will for yeah. us. Isn't that encouraging? Yeah. This is God's will. It's also a peaceful life, which is the absence of internal disturbance. This is what God wants for us. He wants us to have a peaceful and quiet life. Why? Not so that we can experience something really therapeutic and just chill for the rest of our lives. Amen? What does it say? It says He wants us to live... Peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness. In verse 2, this is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all men to be saved yeah, right. and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Amen. He wants us, there want, he wants there to be an absence of disturbances yeah. so we can focus on what really matters, That's right. making every effort to get to heaven yeah. Yeah, and making every effort to help others get to heaven also. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Uh, he says, don't, don't, if, you're, if you're distracted, that's problematic. Yeah. It's problematic. There's something in your life that's sort of disrupting your walk with God. Yeah. You've got to deal with that thing, amen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, God wants you to be totally focused on Him. There are things that are not sinful in and of themselves that become distractions. Yeah. And if they're distractions, they can take out your job. you got to do it, right? Yeah. They can become a distraction. Yeah. They can become a distraction. Yeah. And as a people of God, we've got to be willing to leave any job for the kingdom of God. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Are you with me right there? Yeah. Yeah. We've got to be willing to do anything, go anywhere and give up everything for the kingdom of God. Your children can become a distraction. Yeah. Uh, this happens, especially young moms. They, I mean, they, they can get totally caught up with what's happening with their children. You need to take care of your children, amen? Yeah. Yeah. You need to impress upon their hearts the word of yeah. God. Right. But you can't do that by yourself. You need to walk closely with the Lord. Yeah. And how to walk closely with the Lord also means to seek his kingdom yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You can get caught up with your fiancé. Be caught up with your husband and your wife. The Bible says your interests are divided. You're now more interested in pleasing your wife or your husband than you are pleasing God. Come on. We've got to make sure that we pass these tests. You know what people want in the world? Peace and quiet. Yeah. You know what we have in the kingdom of God? Easy yeah. right? Amen. Now, it's ironic because we're also a bit of a rowdy bunch. Amen. Yeah. 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 Point number one. Yeah. The test of courage. Yeah. Chapter four. You know, Paul's view of the world was a spiritual one. He believed in a spiritual reality. Look at what it says in chapter four, verse one. The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. Amen. If you point these things out to the brothers, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus, brought up in the truths of the faith and of the good teaching that you follow. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness is value for all things. 
holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. This is a, true, a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance, and for this we labor and strive, that we put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, and especially of those who believe, command, and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech and life and love and faith and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching, and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through a prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. You know, Paul says, listen, there's a demonic force that is after everyone that is saved. And it happens through hypocritical liars getting into the church and starting to teach weird things. Yeah. 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 Now, the, when you read through 1 Timothy, you realize these, these, these false teachers didn't start out that way. They were teachers of good doctrine, of godly teaching and instruction, but then they became false teachers. Yes. Amen? Yeah. And this is what Timothy is being warned against. It's a demonic force. When you get baptized, you know, today Alex is getting baptized. Yeah. Yeah. big target on his back. Right. Yeah. He is now Satan's enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Before this, he was Satan's buddy. Satan wasn't worried about him. <laughs> Satan had him right where he wanted him. Wow. Amen. And so were you before you got baptized. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to be really thankful for the people that studied the Bible with yeah. you. I really yeah. appreciate Hello. Femi. Femi gets it. Femi, I, I think it's partially cultural because he's African. Amen. Uh, although he is American, he was born in Baltimore, amen. Come on, man. Yeah. 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 Amen. Uh, there's this sense of honor. He's like, thank you, Jared. I'm like, I found him a favor. I'm like, oh, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, Femi's got a new nickname, though, because of his stature in the church. It's Father Femi. I uh, yeah. 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 Come on, Father Femi. <laughs> he, he, he sits at me. He's thanking the moms. He's thanking the Marys. He's yeah. thanking Tom. He's thanking everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, man, he just gets it. He just gets it. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? You gotta get it. The people that study the Bible, yeah. man, God sent those people into your life. Yeah. Yeah. Now right. you don't you don't worship those people, amen. No. No. Uh, those people are just human beings. But you're like, man, thank you so much for showing the truth to me. I'm so grateful that God used you because before you became a disciple, you were not, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Then you became a disciple, and now you are. And what happens after baptism? Matthew 28 it says you go make disciples, you baptize them, and then what? Teach them to obey. obey. Every day. Obey. Every day. So now you got to learn to obey. Oh, I know we don't like that. I know that scares us. Nah. What do you mean obey? I mean obey. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, in, in Spanish, obedecer. Amen. Oh, it's obedecer. like you mean obey. Give me that. I don't know. Obey. <laughs> obey what? You got to obey the Bible. Yeah. You're like, yeah, bro, that's why I've been reading the Bible, so I don't need to listen to you. No, 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 no. no. The people that taught you the Bible, that made you a disciple, are going to baptize you, and then after you're baptized by them, they're going to teach you to obey. Yeah. What does that imply? You're disobedient. Yeah. Are you with me right there? Yeah. Yeah. Children are disobedient. Yeah. Even my two-year-old, she's like, you know what I mean? Like, I try to take the water bottle. Like, it's just in there. It's in the DNA right there. Amen. You need to obey. No, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. yeah, you need somebody in your life no matter how old you are. Right. Yeah. You know, Leon, he's, he's not a spring chicken. Right. No. Right. Oh, Leon. He's, got some right. he's smooth with it, though, isn't he? You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Uh, and he knows. Okay, man, I've been, I've been uh, religious my whole life. Got a degree. Got a, got, I mean, a training. Great career. Been married forever, you know, three kids, adult children. But you know what Leon understands? The Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I need somebody to teach me to yeah. obey. So guess what? Leon shows up to D time every week. Come on, Leon. Says, teach Leon. me to obey. Yeah. yeah. Come on, Leon. And then, you know what? I heard from a little birdie that when his wife was getting disciples, he was like, ooh, I like this disciple. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. And then when he started getting disciples, he was like, ooh, I don't know about all this. <laughs> you know, as a disciple, you got to have courage. You've got to be brave.
What do you need to be brave about? What does it say in verse 6? It says, if you point these things out to the brothers, you'll be good ministers in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. you got to be brave enough to tell on people what you see. You've got to tell yeah, them the yeah. truth. Yeah. Yeah. you got to love the person more than you love the relationship. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yeah. Because sometimes when you tell people the truth, it doesn't go too good. Yeah. When you push that button, yeah. when you touch that nerve, are you with me? Yeah. Uh, and and, and this, is, this takes courage. You've got to be yeah. brave right. to call people out. If you're afraid to point things out, you've failed the test of courage. In verse 11, Paul tells Timothy, command and teach these things. Command. Command. That's intense. He's telling Timothy, you've got to command the church. you got to teach the church. You know, the Bible calls us not to be politically correct, but biblically correct. Yeah. And yeah. hypocritical liars don't always look like hypocritical liars. Yeah. They are often wolves in sheep's clothes. Come on. Yeah. And we've got to make sure that we're studying the scriptures Amen. to pass the test of courage. Point number two, Come on, bro. the test of godliness. In verse 7 it says, Have nothing to do with godless myths, old wives' tales, or what you saw on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> What you read on Google, yeah. okay. or anything like that. Rather, rather, what should we do instead? Train yourself to be godly. Yeah. For physical training is of some value, but godliness is value for all things. Holy promise for both the present life and the life to come. The test of godliness. You know, the man of God, the woman of God, has got to be godly. The decision to be godly does not make you godly. Mm. Yeah. Come on, bro. It's the training that makes you godly. That's right. So when you get baptized, you get the Holy Spirit. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. But then you need to be trained, taught to obey, and you also need to train yourself yes. to be godly. To, to desire godliness is simply not enough. Right. Now, to train in something hurts. Yes. yes. I, I went to the gym the other day. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, it was a few weeks ago, Joe, Joe Mack, he was sort of hobbled. It was like, foot, foot. You know? It was like, Joe, what's wrong? He's like, I'm old. I can't throw what's wrong with my foot. I'm like, Joe, man, suck it up, Joe. <laughs> You're not that old. And I went to the gym on Friday, and I was on the treadmill for a good little bit of time. Okay, wow. well. And for the past week, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I went to uh, the Strawberry Festival with the campus ministry, oh, and I just trying to keep everybody together. I was like, just, just follow me, guys. <laughs> I was like, man, this hurts. I don't like this. I got tendonitis. I got, oh, I got gout. I got, I don't know. I got, yeah, yeah, bones hurts. I got, I got, I got, I don't know what I got. I'm hurting. I'm in pain. It, it, it hurts to train. Yeah. It's not comfortable. It's not convenient. It's going to cause some pain. It's going to cause some, you, you know, to train is to do it repetitively. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to train yourself to be godly. You know, one of the things we've got to train ourselves to do is to be outgoing. Yeah. 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 Some of us have been told so often, we think it's totally okay, like, I'm shy. No, you're not shy, you're selfish. Amen. Yeah. 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 Just call it what it is. Yeah. 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 Speak up. Amen. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
got to train yourself to be on time, amen? Amen. amen. Oh, oh, my God. Every time. Every time. Every time. Don't trick me, bro. you got to train yourself to be early. That's right. Yeah. It's a training issue. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know. I love disciples. We just have an awesome church. It's like, service starts at 10. I'll get there 10 oh, two. Uh, we've got to train ourselves. We've got to train ourselves to sing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Bible commands us to sing. You know, in the religious world, you watch the singers. Oh, in God's yeah. kingdom, we are the singers. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible doesn't command us to sound good singing. No, sure no. not. And then apparently you would sing good in one. You don't even have to know what it's saying. <laughs> but you do got to sing. And you gotta lift your voice and you gotta make a joyful noise. Okay? Let's all make a quick joyful noise. You need to feel it. You gotta decide to be godly. Godliness comes from a disciplining of your heart. And you gotta discipline your emotions. You sisters, you need to discipline your emotions. You cannot be led by your emotions. Amen. Uh, amen. That's all I'm gonna say right there. You brothers need to stop acting like women and start oh, 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 Godliness comes from rising early in the morning. Yeah. 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 You cannot be a slouch, a sloth, a lazy bone, Ooh. and think you're going to be disciplined. And think you're going to be God. It ain't going to happen. Yeah. you got to get up out of the bed. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Once you make that first turn, you know it's time to get up. <laughs> the Bible says, uh, like a door on its hinges is a sluggard in his bed. Yeah. You know, Oh, it feels so good on this side. That's, that, you hit that dude's button. Oh, over to the other side. Oh, you flip the pillow. Oh, 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 it's so nice. Do you think Jesus was doing that? Do you think Jesus was like, wait, Peter, just a few more minutes. I just had a long day yesterday. You know, let's turn over to Mark chapter 1. Yeah. Oh, Teach us, bro. It was the park service that just set up the banners and the, <laughs> and the volleyball net afterwards. <laughs> Part one, verse 35. Very early in the morning. Oh, oh, well, it was still dark. Oh, oh Jesus yeah. got up. Amen. <laughs> what? He didn't read the Bible on his phone laying down. Oh, <laughs> that is not a quiet eye. My biggest temptation is to sit. I have a recliner. People. And in the morning, it's early. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And it's often still dark. And I want to just sit and sip my coffee and read my phone, you know? Like, I'm reading the Bible, but I'm like this. <laughs> I'm like, this ain't it, you know what I mean? Like, you think about Jesus showing up in that moment, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> And you know what the answer is? 
Yes. When you die. Amen. Come on, but until that time, if I'm going to make it to the end, it's laboring and striving that yeah. will get me there. The religious world will tell you something totally different. The religious world offers therapy with the Bible attached. God offers you the Word of God with nothing attached. Just the hope that comes from obeying. Yep. Come on, the promises that come with that. We've got to make a commitment today. Listen, we're going to labor and strive to build this church. Are you with me? We're going to labor and strive to build the kingdom at large. We're going to send people out. Amen. We just sent the Daytona team out. We're sending more out. Amen. We're going to labor and strive to build up our lives in Christ to make sure that they are indestructible and unshakable. Well, you've got to have unshakable faith. Is there anything that shakes your faith? Mm. What does that mean? Is there anything that causes your idealism to start to slump? Yeah. You're no longer seeing the kingdom in a light of perfection, <laughs> but you're starting to project your cynicism onto what is happening in God's church. Yeah. Wow. Is, wow. It, is it rocking your faith? You know, God has not changed, amen? Yeah. amen. Yeah. He never changes. God cannot improve. He can't get better. He's as good no. as it gets. Nor is he dying. He's not decaying. He's not devolving. Amen? Amen. God is, is the same today, tomorrow, yeah. or what is it? Yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. Now, you remember when you got baptized? Weren't you fired up? Yeah. yeah. God is just as fired up today as the day you were baptized. Amen. He's just as awesome as ever. He's just as excited about his relationship with you as he ever was. He does not change. It's us who change. So we've got to stop changing. We've got to start disciplining that's the yeah. difference. You know, when you're not disciplined, you change a lot. Yeah, I'm yeah, that way. I, I change. I go up and down. I make this decision and that decision. It's like, okay, I'm going to lose weight. No, I'm not. I got you. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, no, God doesn't change. It's like, no, you got to make a plan and you got to stick to it. Yeah. 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 But is there anything that, that, that rocks your faith? Physical training has some value. You do need, because of the effectiveness of your work for the Lord, you need to be healthy physically. You need to be healthy emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you need to be health, healthy mentally. You need to check your spiritual health. How am I doing? Now, when you're feeling overwhelmed and anxious, so did Jesus. The remedy is prayer and yeah, fasting. That's right. Well, sometimes right. when you feel overwhelmed, what do you want to do? You want to retreat. You need like you need a sabbatical, and you need like eight hours of me time and Netflix to boot. Uh, but the truth is, we don't need a break from God and the kingdom. We don't need a break from discipleship. We need a break from our sin. Come on. Why are you exhausted? Why are you overwhelmed? Because there's something in your life that is as dominant, if not more, than God. There's something rivaling God in your life. Come on, Ralph. And you're torn about it. You're anxious about it. You're worried about it. Maybe it's your financial security. Well, do you think God's going to accept that on the day of judgment? Oh, you were worried about your financial security. That's why you backed off of your commitment. I get it. But no, that's not going to fly. Are you with me? He says, man, if there's anything that we're worried and anxious about, it's because it's rivaling God. Yeah. You can be worried about your future. You can be worried about your role in the church, your title, your yeah. this, your that, your relationship. The Bible says, humble yourself before God's mighty hand. He will lift you up, cast your anxiety on him. Because he cares for you. Come on, yeah. bro. As Leon taught us a couple weeks ago, we're not designed to carry anxiety. Yeah. But God can bear our burden. Amen. 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 It takes discipline to be early. It takes discipline to stay late. You need to be disciplined financially. Yeah. yeah. Go on, bro. Right. That means, you know, not spending frivolously. Yeah. The Bible says, Songs, uh, Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15, catch for us the little boxes, little boxes that ruin the vineyard. You'd be shocked at how much money you spend at Circle K or Wawa or Starbucks. Oh, yes. yeah. Let me tell you something right here, guys. We've got our weekly contribution every week, amen? Yeah. 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 We've got our special missions contribution coming up, amen? Yeah. 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 have that financial discipline to give first to God and then take care of the rest of our lives, amen? Yeah. Point number three, the test of progress. Look what it says in verse 12. On, Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. Set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching, and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through a prophetic message, when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them, so that everyone may see your progress. You know, people need to see your progress. You've got to show progress in your ability to teach the Bible and yeah. to preach His Word. Amen? Right. You've got to show progress in your purity. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. we believe in absolute purity in God's church. That's right. Uh, when Rachel and I got married, we had our very first kiss. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Are you with me right there? Come on, bro. That's the standard. Yeah. That's the standard. You know what's uh, so awesome? Nothing like that happens in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we try to bring the world into the church. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but before I became a disciple, that was not the standard. Amen? Amen. Uh, but because I became a disciple, I was purified and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And because I had discipling in my life, I had people in my life helping me out, shaping me. Rachel and I had a totally pure day. Come on. Amen. And that's the ball. Yeah. Uh, the way we dress needs to be modest. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We need to think about the type of clothing that we're wearing, uh, not to draw attention to ourselves, yeah, right. uh, but rather to honor and glorify God. Amen. Uh, everybody's looking. We all watch each other, don't we? Yeah. yeah. And we're all watching each other, and we need to we need to encourage each other, and we need to show each other the progress that we've made. Amen. You know, you need to show yourself as progressing and being able to take criticism. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Amen, husbands? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. You need to take criticism. Criticism is good because it helps you to become what God yeah. wants you to be. Just give yourself wholly to these things. Give yourself wholly to what? To singing, studying the Bible, Come on. praying, fellowshipping, cooking the lunch for Sunday dinner. Right Come there. on. Uh, give yourself wholly to these things and you will grow and it will be obvious. You know, there's nothing more inspiring then when you see people growing and changing. Yep. I'll never forget when Kyle got restored last July. Yeah, come on, Kyle. Oh, yeah. It was the most inspiring thing I had seen in yeah. years. Yeah. You see restorations, and then there's a restoration. Yeah. There's a, a movement of the Spirit that, man, brought Kyle from what felt like the ends of the earth, even yeah. though we could see him periodically at church. But it was the Holy Spirit. It was God that called him back to his kingdom. And he has been a worker ever since. Yeah. 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 That inspires us. That yeah. us up. It is time for us to change. It's time for us to grow. First Corinthians 9, the call is to win as many as possible. That's right. And that's Amen. what it's all about. The test of a disciple. Are you ready to pass it? Yeah. 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 The test of courage. The test of godliness. The test of progress. Amen. You know, Jesus passed the test. Amen. He was tempted to give up, but he didn't. Turn over finally to Matthew 26. Come on, right. Jared. Go, bro. Right. Go. In Matthew 26 and verse 36, this is the eve of the crucifixion. It says in verse 36, Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter, Watch and pray so you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible, for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. What did we learn from this? Jesus did not want to die. Yeah. God's will, the will of the Father, for Jesus, was not something that Jesus, in his humanity, wanted to comply with. It took him three hours of prayer in the middle of the night to get his will lined up with the will of the Father. Wow. How long do you think it'll take us? Yeah. It's going to take some prayer. It's going to yeah. take some effort. Jesus wanted to be the Savior. Jesus wanted to offer you and me an opportunity. But he had to push himself to the total brink to make it happen. He says, my flesh, I don't want to do it. But my spirit does. Yeah. The flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. I've got to put my flesh under so that I can obey God's will and do what he wants me to do. And that's the call for all of us. You know, I think about my own life and all the things that I don't want to do. And there's plenty. Amen? Come on, Jerry. Uh, there, 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 I know that this is the right thing. I'd just rather do this other thing. Right. Now I'm at a point 
point in my life where the other thing is not a bad thing. It's not even a sinful thing. It's just not the cross. Yeah. 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 Come on, yeah. That's what Jesus had to choose it from. He's like, there's either the cross or there's life, and life is awesome. I love being with my disciples. It's not like Jesus wanted to go sin. He just didn't want the perfect yeah. cross that God had made for him. Right. And for me, my cross, it's perfect for me. Yeah. Jesus yeah. knows exactly how to bring me right to my knees. Yeah. 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 Say, this is what you need. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there, this is it. This is everything. It's not the cross plus this and that and the third and a new a new promotion at work. It's just the cross and that's sufficient. And when you surrender Wonder. to the cross and you take up that cross, it becomes an incredible blessing. Yeah, yeah. We sing about the cross. We pray before the cross. We see the cross and it immediately brings to mind the sacrifice that Jesus did for us. Well, that's what he wants us to be. He wants us to be a walking reminder of the sacrifice that he made. So I want you to think about it for a moment. What's the thing that God wants you to do? What's the cross? Now this other thing may not be an evil thing, a sinful thing, or even a bad thing, but is it the cross? Let's be like Jesus and pray through our emotions, pray through our temptations, pray through our feelings, and surrender everything to God this morning. Let's pray.